Hello, my name is Joanna Lemley. I am a wetland ecologist with the Colorado Natural Heritage Program at Colorado State University. The following presentation will cover the site evaluation process, both in the office and in the field, for the Riparian and Wetland AIM program. You can follow along in Section 3.0 of the Field Protocol for Lentic Riparian and Wetland Systems. Site evaluation is a critical process for all monitoring projects. Once a sampling approach and the specific coordinates associated with sample locations have been selected, each location must be evaluated to ensure it fits within the target population of the monitoring project. In general, the target population is the applicable riparian and wetland ecosystems defined in Section 1.2 of the protocol. However, some monitoring projects may refine the target population further, for example, by administrative unit, wetland type, management priority, such as sage-grouse habitat, or by specific zones of interest within a larger riparian or wetland complex. Each potential sample location should be evaluated through a two-step process of office evaluation followed by field verification. The site evaluation process is particularly important for projects with a random sample design that will be used to estimate the range of conditions across a population of interest. There is more flexibility in evaluating targeted sites, which are selected for management objectives. To reiterate concepts from a previous presentation, the field protocol for lentic riparian and wetland systems is intended for vegetated riparian and wetland areas, sometimes referred to as lentic areas. These include a variety of different habitats that are influenced by surface and groundwater, from floodplains and beaver complexes to vernal pools and peatlands. For consistent application in the field, the protocol contains a set of six field criteria to determine if a site meets the applicable ecosystems. The criteria are related to vegetation, hydrology, and size. For a more detailed explanation, please listen to the presentation on defining the target population. To summarize, the first two criteria are based on vegetation. First, monitoring plots must have at least 10% cover of perennial vegetation under typical growing season conditions without disturbance. Second, sites must be dominated by hydrophytic species, those rated obligate, facultative wetland, or facultative by the National Wetland Plant List. The third and fourth criteria are based on hydrology. Number three, Monitoring plots must be influenced by surface or groundwater at some point in the growing season, and the majority of the monitoring plot must be beyond the immediate banks of an unvegetated active river and stream channel. No more than 10% of the monitoring plot should include an unvegetated active stream channel. In addition, it's number four, no more than 10% of the monitoring plot should include permanent standing water deeper than 50 centimeters or 20 inches during the growing season. The fifth and sixth criteria are based on size. Number five, the site must have sufficient area to accommodate three 25 meter transects with individual transects spaced at least five meters apart. And number six, narrow sites must have a minimum average width of two meters. Site evaluation is a two-step process. The first step takes place in the office. This step should be conducted before the start of the field season to maximize efficiency. Anyone involved in the project can conduct office evaluation, including BLM resource specialists, contracted crew managers, or crew leads. The purpose of office evaluation is to determine whether the sample location or surrounding area is likely to meet the definition of the target population, to verify if the sample location is accessible, and if so, to plan a travel route, and to develop a preliminary plan for laying out the monitoring plots. When conducting office evaluations, all area within 50 meters of the sample location should be evaluated because monitoring plots can be shifted up to 50 meters away from the sample location to be fully within riparian and wetland habitat. Office evaluations can include, but is not limited to, reviewing aerial imagery, topographic maps, riparian and wetland mapping, and other ancillary and spatial information, compiling previously collected monitoring or assessment data, consulting with field office resource specialists for local knowledge, and contacting private landowners to obtain access permissions and instructions. This process is conducted in the site evaluation web map in ArcGIS Online, 
Crew leads and crew managers for each field team should conduct office evaluation in the spring to prepare for the summer field season. Office evaluations can be used to determine whether a sample location is accessible and if it is a member of the target population. These determinations should always be based on at least two lines of evidence, including aerial imagery and local knowledge or aerial imagery followed by a scouting visit. All rejections should be reviewed by a BLM project lead to ensure that the site is indeed unsampleable. This is especially important for targeted sites, which have been chosen for a specific management question. Any sample location that is rejected during office evaluation needs to be assigned a category and a reason listed in Table 5. Reasons that a site would be considered permanently inaccessible include the following. Access was denied to private land that would need to be crossed in order to reach the sample location. Terrain, such as cliffs, steep slopes, waterfalls, or permanently deep water, prevent access to the sample location. Or, the distance to reach the sample location from a road or UTV path was greater than 5 kilometers. The specific distance threshold here can be adjusted depending on programmatic goals. Reasons that a site would be considered non-target include upland vegetation, a lack of perennial vegetation, permanent deep water surrounding the sample location, a site that cannot accommodate three 25 meter transects or is less than two meters wide, or land administered by the wrong agency or um, fully owned by private landowners. For random sample designs, it is critical that the correct reason is attributed to every rejected sample location in order to inform the design estimates. Below are examples of office rejects, including a small artificial pond with no perennial vegetation along the margins, a sample location that fell within a deep water lake, and a gully with no hydrophytic vegetation. Every sample location that passes the office evaluation screening must be visited in the field, either during a scouting visit or immediately before sampling. To carry out a field evaluation, navigate as close to the site as possible and determine if the site meets all the criteria for the target population. This shut slide shows sites that could be evaluated as non-target in the field. The lower right shows an active stream channel with only a thin line of vegetation on the bank. The center photo shows a mud flat with less than 10% cover vegetation close enough to the sample location. The upper left shows a drainage dominated by upland vegetation. Figure 4 in the protocol, shown here, is a flowchart for the field evaluation process. The Location Verification Survey 123 form also assists with field evaluation. Both guide you through the considerations needed to determine if a site is sampleable. In some cases, the obstacle, hazard, or deep water are only temporary, and sampling may be possible at a later time. In those cases, the sample location would be classified as reattempt needed and details should be recorded to assist with future attempts. Any sample location that is not sampled during the field evaluation process must be assigned a category and a reason listed in Table 5. The reasons for permanently inaccessible and NARN target are the same as in office evaluation, but the table also includes reasons a site would be classified as reattempt needed. Those include if a different route or permissions were needed, if water at the sample location was deeper than 50 centimeters at the time of a visit, but will likely recede later in the season. If the site was visited as a recon trip and sampling is planned for later in the season. If the sample location meets all the criteria, but the vegetation was unidentifiable because the visit was too early or too late in the season. If recent flood, fire, or other disturbance has caused significant impact on the vegetation, but is likely to recover within the season or in the next season. This designation should be reviewed by BLM projects leads to verify if data collection should wait or proceed. Lastly, if the crew started to access or sample but ran out of time, the crew was turned back by inclement weather or various other safety reasons. Sites designated as reattempt needed should be visited again during the same season if possible or in the following season. At the end of the field season, every site should be assigned one of four sample statuses, sampled, reattempt needed,
permanently inaccessible and non-target. Please note, dense vegetation or other difficulty moving through a site is not a reason to reject a site. Unfortunately, some sites will be more difficult to sample than others, but many will be easy. Lastly, there are several considerations to keep in mind for targeted sites. A targeted site may be selected in a potential restoration area where riparian or wetland vegetation has contracted or dried due to channelization, soil disruption, or declining hydrology. In these instances, a targeted monitoring site may be installed that extends into upland vegetation in order to track change in response to restoration activities or other management actions, like this site on Holly Creek in Idaho. Other considerations include sampling within or outside fence exclosures, or selecting specific zones of interest within larger wetland complexes. For more information, please read section 3.4 in the protocol. This concludes the presentation outlining the site evaluation process within the field protocol for lentic riparian and wetland systems. Thank you very much for listening.